Hello class and welcome to another simple science video and this is a very 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 much requested topic or rather a very long chapter in our IGCSC revision series that is organic chemistry and in this video how to introduce organic chemistry and the main basic concepts that will allow you to describe every group of organic compounds that you will learn in this very very long chapter and this chapter is going to be quite difficult for those who are weak at memorizing things but if you are then if you are good at memorizing things then then great okay so this uh, chapter or topic will basically barely involve any stoichiometry or calculations it's mainly going to be hard textbook stuff okay so let's just introduce the background of organic chemistry as its own. So if I were to characterize organic chemistry and base it around a single element, it would be carbon. And I'm going to use living organisms to introduce organic chemistry. So in other videos or textbooks, they tend to use crude oil, but I tend to associate things that are you know closer to us so in this video I use living organisms to introduce organic chemistry so living organisms are made primarily of carbon so most compounds or you will find a prevalent number of compounds inside us and other living beings and they will be made of carbon such as amino acids which are which basically make a protein okay so carbon compounds as a result are very versatile and this is because the carbon atom has four available bonding electrons in its valence outer shell so it can form four different types of bonds and four different types of configurations so therefore it can form a multitude a massive amount of configurations to form very very different carbon compounds so this is why they are very versatile so carbon can form bonds with other atoms such as hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So these three compounds are, are very common to form bonds with carbon. But additionally, carbon can also form bonds with other carbon atoms to form very, basically very long chains or branch chains of carbon atoms, okay? So this all, so the fact that carbon is able to bond with different atoms as well as carbon itself allows living beings to have such huge variety okay so now we talk about a very very important concept in organic chemistry and that is the ch group so in all living beings there will always be carbon compounds which contain the ch bond and what's great about the ch bond is that it will help us separate between compounds which are not organic and compounds which are organic so we characterize it as the ch group which is basically a group containing the carbon atom the hydrogen atom and the two electrons which form a covalent bond between them that's all it is and as i said it helps us separate atoms us uh, separate compounds that are organic and not organic and it will help us define organic chemistry. So organic chemistry is basically the study of compounds which contain this group. It is, so therefore, organic compounds are basically compounds which contain the CH group. Okay, cool. Now we go to learning about how to describe organic compounds and a first step to describing organic compounds is having a symbolic way in which we can describe them so we commonly use formulae to describe organic compounds so there are three main different type of formulae there are actually four but we'll talk about the fourth one which is the general formula under homologous series okay so three main formula formulae to describe any organic compound so the first one is the molecular formula and then you have the structural formula and then you have the displayed formula and I will talk about de talk into detail about each formula so the first is the molecular formula you probably have seen this before 
So a molecular formula is basically a formula that will dis display the exact number of atoms of each element in the compound. So for example, we will use the example on the left, which is ethane, which is a compound which contains two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms bonded in this co uh, covalent compound. So therefore, the molecular formula is simply C2H6 where 2 is the number of carbon atoms and 6 is the number of hydrogen atoms. Now let's look at the structure formula, which is basically the same as the molecular formula. However, it splits all carbon atoms in the formula into its separate positions so that the, all the surrounding atoms are, around each carbon atom are put separately. So in other words, for this example, the first carbon atom is represented as C, and the first three carbon, uh, hydrogen atoms which surround it are H3, so we have the formula as CH3, followed by CH3 again, which represent the second carbon atom surrounded by the second set of hydrogen atoms. Okay, so the total, or the whole structural formula which describes ethane is CH3, CH3. Okay, now let's look at the easiest formula which is the display formula, which is basically the structural formula, but it shows all of the bonds, all of the covalent bonds, and the arrangements of the bonds surrounding each of the carbon atoms. Okay, so those are basically the three main formula you can use to describe any organic compound. So let's look at a concept, as I mentioned briefly, the homologous series. Okay. So in organic chemistry, in our IGCs organic chemistry, you will learn about four main groups of organic compounds. The first being the alkanes family, second being the alkenes family, third being the alcohols family, and the carboxylic acids. There may be reactions between members of each of these families, but we will talk about that in a much later video. Okay, so homologous series, right. Each of the organic group organic groups of compounds are known as a homologous series. So the alkanes family is known as a homologous series. So all alkanes are they belong to a homologous series called the alkanes. So all alkenes belong to a homologous series groups of alkenes and so on. So homologous series is basically a fancy way of saying a group of organic compounds. And what the great thing is is for each homologous series they have or they share similar characteristics. So all members of a homologous series will have the same functional group which are basically responsible for the chemical properties. Don't worry about this. All three of these uh, bullet pointed I will describe in detail in the next couple of slides. Okay, so they will have the same functional group which will determine their chemical properties and since they have the same functional groups they will have or similar um, chemical properties, or they will react the same way to other atoms or by, on its own. Next, they will show a gradual change in physical properties, which in other words mean, means is that members in a homologous series will have very, very similar physical properties, but they will only differ by um, the number of carbon atoms in its chain. And of course, these examples I will mention very in very much detail when I talk about or make a video about each homologous series in much more detail later on. And they will have the same general formula, which is basically a formula used to describe, symbolically describe any organic compound within a homologous series. So let's look at what I mean by them having the same functional group. A functional group is basically a group of atoms which are responsible for all chemical reactions involved in the members of a homologous series. So for example, in the alkanes homologous series, the CH group is responsible for all chemical reactions. In the alkenes, the double bond, this carbon-carbon double bond group is responsible for all reactions in the alkenes. In the alcohols group, the OH bond connected to the carbon bond will be responsible for all chemical reactions for alcohols. And in carboxylic acid groups, the C double OH or the COH 
O will be responsible for all chemical reactions involving carboxylic acids. Okay, so as a result, they are responsible for the chemical properties which make each homologous series different from each other. So when I talk about they showing they're, them showing a gradual change in physical properties or they're, they're showing similar physical properties but they depend on the number of carbon atoms in the chain, what I mean is that the physical properties of the members of the homologous series will depend on the number of carbon atoms within the chain. So for example, let's use the boiling point of the members of a homologous series as an example. So as you can see for alkanes, as you increase the number of carbon atoms in the chain, the boiling point of, the alk of each compound will increase very predictably in a straight line. So we call this a gradual change in physical properties. And these changes, as you can see, will apply for alkenes, alcohols, and carboxylic acids. So in all organic compounds, the physical properties will be very, very predictable based on its homologous series and its uh, number of carbons in its um, chain. Okay. So the last concept that I talked briefly in homologous series is the general formula. The general formula is basically a formula involving a variable n, which is able to describe or name a molecular formula for all members of the homologous series. So for example, looking at the alkane group, the general formula is CNH2N plus 2. So in this case, we have ethane. So if you plug in the N as 2, you end up with the molecule correctly as C2H6. So based on the number N, which most of the time will be the number of carbon atoms, you will basically have the molecular formula to all members of the homologous series. So this is applicable to alkenes, alcohols, and carboxylic acids. Okay, so I hope you find this video useful. Please, if you have any questions, just shoot them, them down in the comment section. And I hope you can subscribe to my channel, like my videos, watch my other videos to help you with your revision. And if there's any feedback you can give me, that would be awesome. And I wish you the best in your revision. Thank you.